welcome to another episode of Play on a Trap Podcast. This is episode 161. Woo! Woo! The palindrome. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Three weeks, I, I think, at least. Almost a whole month. Yeah. What? How did you guys survive? I know. <laughs> I just survive without our voices. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what to do. Uh-huh. So, yeah, things happen. Quite a few things, actually. Not all of them yeah. good. Yeah. Which is a <laughs> recurring theme on this podcast anyway, so... <laughs> Welcome you to know. Video Games. Video Games. <laughs> Pretty much. Where people get exploited. Yay. <laughs> and you favorite. level up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the usual thing. Sarah, what'd you do? Yeah. Um, I was pretty busy in my personal life. I did go to, we have a renaissance fair, um, in my state that's pretty big, and I always enjoy going to that every year. So, nothing really new there, just my general fall nerdum speciality, I suppose you could say. Um, the only other thing I think of note was I finished one of the routes for that new Fire Emblem game, Three Houses. I did the Blue Lions route. Yes, it's very good. I still need to play the rest of the routes. It's just hard because the fir- trying to play through the first part of the game over again is really tough mm. because the characters are new, but what you do every month is exactly the same. Like, the missions are the same. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, and so that's really rough. And what's even Oh, yeah, harder- that's the reason why I don't really replay games. It tends to be kind of the same. You say it's a different viewpoint, but it's pretty much the same thing. I'm doing. Well, that, here's the problem is what I know for sure is that the first part of the game is pretty much the same, but I know the second half really won't be. I think the missions might be Is it a choices similar. meta kind of thing? Less of that and just more that every route has a different part of the story that they So it tell. branches out, basically. Yeah, it oh, has like okay. a different like aspect of the story that you learn, oh, okay. and so that's the problem. It's like I I played one route, and now there's so many questions I still have. Like I still don't know who my character is, which is the biggest mystery. Oh. They still haven't like yeah. So I now have is to like replay. Is it new game plus, and you can use the same character with all there the? There is. That's the good news. It is new game plus, and what that means is, um, basically you can. There's a currency in the game when you do missions called Renown that the first time you play, you use to unlock bonuses. Those bonuses stay when you play the new game plus. So you have those. So I didn't, like, unlock all of them last time. Mm. So now I can continue to unlock those. I'm almost done unlocking them. Is that passive stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Mm. other good thing is you can use the points to also raise certain stats that automatically grow throughout the game such as your skills um, so like once you've got all the bonuses you just raise stats then pretty much you can pretty much yeah uh, um you can't like completely get to where you were at when you ended the game but you can get certain things higher like for instance your professor level determines how many like activities you can do during the free time sections so i raised it immediately to level b so that i had way more like room to do stuff um and stuff like that so i can start raising a lot of those things faster <laughs> Um, and also what's really cool is, this is a this is nice, is they let you also, if you had already unlocked, like, supports conversations with certain characters, you can also pay to, like, unlock those again each level so that you don't have to redo conversations that you already had. It'd be nice to so. if they just let you skip ahead until the part where it branches out. Well, the reason is it clear? is because... Is it clear when it branches out? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's very Uh, clear. There's a huge, like, climax that happens at the end of part one, and then it goes into part two. It's very, it's a time Mm. skip. It's very clear. Um, The main reason that they don't is because you're spent, the first half is spending time basically, like, teaching your students and leveling up their classes and stuff like that. And you still do that in the second part of the game, but it's a little less focus on that. So that's why. This, and also the other reason you kind of have to get through the first part is those supports conversations that are integral to Fire Emblem games these days. There, You actually can miss out on them if you don't get them in time, which can be really annoying. Um, it only happens if, like, you're not trying. But you, if you want to, like, get your max levels with all of your, your squad mates, basically, you got to start ch- chatting with them ahead of time because the story conversations only make sense in the first part. So... 
it's very clear. It's frustrating, but they did the best they could, given what they had. I mean, there's ways I could automate it. I could just say, like, the game level up my characters. You know, I don't I don't want to choose, but I just, I'm too picky. <laughs> so, um... At least so all three is in one game instead of three separate yeah. games. Oh, thank God. I know. They seem to have finally <laughs> learned their lesson on that one. Especially since, I mean, it's a long game. Like, mm. they... It's about as long as one of those older games. It's pretty extensive. They could have probably split up this game. I'm glad they didn't, but they could have. Um, but yeah, and uh, what was I going to say? The only thing, the only other problem I have is, so I play with the Blue Lions. I'm currently doing Golden Deer, which is like everyone's favorite right now. Oh. But I kind of prefer my Blue Lions. My Golden Deer crew just seems like a crazier... Like, there's characters that have, like, similar traits as across houses. They're not exactly the same, but, like, they're kind of similar That's tropes. the tropes. Oh, right. The tropes are very similar. And I'm just, like, in my opinion, I'm just, like, the Golden Deer just has the worst tropes of some of my favorite characters from the Blue Lion House. And also, they're just a little crazier. And that's why people <laughs> love them, because they're a little, like, crazier, but they're not, like, super serious. But I miss my Blue Lions. <laughs> I really do. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'll be curious to see how the other house, Black Eagles, is. Um, but yeah, it's, I just haven't really picked it up since then. It's not that I dislike it. It's just, I kind of needed a break and I'll, I'll be coming back to it. I'm sure. I'm curious. I want to know the full story. I want to know who I am. My character is (laughs) weird. (laughs) So, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I think you'd really like it a lot. Um, especially since you like Persona 5. It's really, Hmm. it's not as like stylish as Persona 5 for sure, but. It's easier to go into like. Nowadays, when I play a game, when I go into a game, like, it's easy to get into those, like, 30-hour games, like, 20, 30, 40 hour max kind of games. It just feels easy to get into. I wanted to try, like, starting Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and I'm just like, jeez. I know, I know, I know what you mean. But yeah, this game, I mean, the cool thing about this game is you can skip as much as you want to if you, I mean, it's not a good idea to because mm. you'll miss out on experience, but you can, like, if you really don't care about the conversations or if the opposite, if you don't really care so much about micromanaging, leveling up, you can skip that. One thing I will definitely say for um, Three Houses, I think I mentioned this the first time I played it, but now that I've played a whole run through of it, I can very confidently say that... You know, Persona feels very much like if you don't micromanage your time effectively, you're going to miss out on a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, you better know. You got to need – you need a walkthrough to know, like, what day to do whatever. That none of that is – Actually, most of the time, at least Persona 4 and Persona 5, you can't – I don't – no, hold on. Persona 4, you can get the ultimate ending first run, I believe. Oh, okay. Persona 5, you you just can't. Like, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no way to do it exactly and so um and you have to be like perfectly you know synchronized of how you're Mm. doing everything to like get all the stuff you want fire emblem has none of that you will very you will have to try you would have to really like try to not get the stuff you need i very it's very easy to make sure that you get all your relationship stuff with all the characters that you want and stuff like that um it's a little harder to get it with each other just because they have to do it in battles you can't just spam flowers like i did (laughs) because you can give gifts Mm. so (laughs) you can't just do that um but like you know there every decision there's really no wrong decision to make just maybe not the most optimal but even then like i stopped worrying about the optimal decision after a while because Mm. especially when you get higher level you're always probably going to spend your free time exploring because you can do the most stuff so you might as well just do that as opposed to some of the other things that they recommend. So I I felt it was a little more like I could relax a bit <laughs> with uh, with the choices and stuff. So yeah, um, still playing it. Otherwise, what else did I do? My brother and I watched a twelve episode M- anime in one day. That was weird. Um, what anime? It was called Okami-san, and what was it called? <sighs> I'm gonna be really mad if I. Oh, Kami's like furry anime. <laughs> it wa- it's not hilariously enough. Um, Okami-san and her seven companions. It's oh, a twelve cool. episode shojo, basically, with some shonen elements, but mostly a shojo. It's they kind of it's doing a um, a uh, fairy tale vibe. So mm. like the basically the premise is. 
there's a school a bunch of people go to, and the main characters have set up this special thing called the something bank. They basically do favors for other students, which usually involves beating people up or money or something like that. And the main character, Okami, she represents the wolf. Her best friend is known as like the little red riding hood. And each of the other characters also represents some kind of like fairy tale motif. And the main story is just that there's this guy who represents the hunter because he's a sharpshooter, but he's also like a total weeb. <laughs> and he's in love with the wolf character, and she's all Sundari about it. But like, that's like the premise, but it gets pretty dark, <laughs> surprisingly. They really deal with some pretty dark storylines. Um, like, just as sort of an example, the Red Riding Hood character is also kind of seen as Red Rose. So they play with that motif because she had a sister named Snow White. Meaning, there is this story of Snow White, but there's also a story of Red Rose and Snow White, which is a separate fairy tale. And so you're like, oh, you were sisters. And then she finds that they were half-sisters because basically her dad kicked out Snow White and her mom and wanted Red Rose and her mom to move in. And she feels really guilty about it. And that's a whole episode. <laughs> so it gets really dark. Um, but it was cute. Um, it was 12 episodes. I... If you're bored, it's it's cute. <laughs> That's about all I can say about it, to be honest with you. So yeah, that. Did I see any movies? I don't think I saw any movies that I didn't already talk about. So that's been my three weeks. <laughs> Exciting stuff, I know. <laughs> What'd you do? Uh, so? I watched uh, Netflix's Cannon Busters. Oh, Is that new? oh, I've heard about it. It's pretty new. Um, visually. It looks kind of like Rygun if it was done by the studio that did Megalobox. Um, Because the setting's very Trigun, where it's like, it's the vaguely kind of sci-fi Mad Max Mm post-apocalypse. I don't really know. Um, But that's just the appearance. Like, it's not like a ripoff of Trigun. Um, The characters are pretty different. Um, Basically, it's like the main character cannot die, or rather, he can die, but he always comes back. And every time he comes back, like, a number appears on his body. Like, number... It's the ninth time you've died. It's number nine appears somewhere on his body. Um, and he's wanted. And so, two... Uh, a, like, a friendship robot and a, like, mechanical repair robot uh, track him down because they think he can help them get to, um, basically, this, this certain kingdom... Um, and the story's jumping between following those three and the kingdom itself that they're trying to get to, Mm -hmm. where, like, some guy whose magic has showed up and he's kind of, like, kicking their butt because they rely on technology too much. Um, like, the final episode is kind of, like, both those storylines converging, which is cool, but, uh, there's almost no payoff. That sets up Mm -hmm. real hard for a sequel series, which is a little disappointing. Uh, I liked it. Did they finally, do they explain, like, why the main character doesn't die? I mean, he comes no. back. Nope. Oh, okay. No idea. So there's okay. a zero closure, um, which is not very anime thing to do, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> very Netflix thing uh, to do, I guess. Yeah. And so then they'll cancel thing, season three. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched all of that. I started watching the Dark Crystal Netflix show, which is fantastic. Um, I would not say it's appropriate for children. I mean, I don't know really? that it's less appropriate than the movie was, but like it's there's a lot of violence and just yeah. dark stuff. It's like this is this is pretty grim. I don't know how much of it a kid would absorb really, but uh I'm liking it a lot. I need to watch more. I'm six episodes into the ten episode series. Um I think that's all I watch. Oh oh I watched a really good movie from early two thousands called The Gangs of New York a Scorsese film. It's funny because I saw the Netflix banner for it and I thought it starred um, uh, Liam Neeson and Timothy Dalton. And I start watching the movie and Liam Neeson dies in the first two minutes and it was Ah! never Timothy Dalton. It was Daniel Day-Lewis with a mustache. So... (laughs) (laughs) Is it he played that... uh, The Butcher. The Butcher. Mm. Yeah. He won an Oscar for that or something, right? He did. He was the only character to win an Oscar in that movie, but it also has Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Cameron Diaz and uh, what's the actor who plays Mad-Eye Moody? He's in it too. And John C. Riley. So it's a really good movie. It's three hours long. There's Damn. some really weird editing decisions at some point that are kind of like, going to be like hip-hoppy and modern, but uh, I, I, find, I think, I haven't seen a lot of like classic gangster movies, 
what I really liked this movie, it was really fun to have the camera pan over a crowd of like, like mid 1800 gangsters. And then it's like, you're all clearly in the same gang because you have a look going, but you also all are very unique. It's like, like if, if like, if I uh, took Mad Max, like, oh, here's the war boys. They all look like spooky makeup ghost skeletons. But here it's like, oh, you've, they all, they all have like red sashes. Like you clearly have like claws. You have a big cleaver. You have a club. You have like a big old scar on your face. They're all characters. It's like each of you could have been the main character of your own show probably. So it's kind of cool just to have that sense even if you don't really get to explore it. Um, you have enough time exploring the other characters, which is great. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I'd recommend that if you have a spare three hours. I actually watched it over two days. Yeah, I watched like an hour long. and a half Saturday, Sunday, because <laughs> that's a, yeah, I didn't, didn't want to do that. Um, been playing a lot more Monster Hunter. Uh, Ooh, yeah, I've finally one. finished. Iceborne. No, it's not. Uh, Iceborne didn't come out on PC. Originally, it oh, was yeah. come out on PC like two weeks ago, but like they last minute, it. they're kind of like, psych, January for you PC losers. I gotta wait for that, but um, I'm I feel like I'm actually in the current end game now. Like not the end most game, but like I can see the end game. I'm kind of doing end gamey things. Like if this was World of Warcraft, I wouldn't be raiding, but I'd be like trying to get my raid gear kind of stuff. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, that's kind of cool. I've tried new. I've tried all the weapons I want to try now, and so I'm getting a pretty good sense of what I like and what I don't like. Although I'm not that much closer to like picking a favorite or anything. Um, and speaking of WoW, just yesterday, as a, a treacherous friend got me to sign up for WoW Classic. So yeah. I <laughs> intend to play that for one month and no longer. That's my intent. <laughs> we'll see uh -huh. what happens. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll check back I'm with usually, you in a few weeks. I'm usually pretty good at that, but that is usually only for new content. Let's see. We'll see if WoW Classic, because it's drawn out and more painful, either I get tired of it faster or, or slower. We'll see. I don't really know what to expect, but I, I'm, I give it... I don't know, 60, 40, 70, 30 odds, I actually do stop in a month. <laughs> 60, <laughs> um, 70. <laughs> those are affected by whether or not I do get uh, Borderlands 3, which at this time, I also don't intend to do, but uh, depending upon who does, I may join them. <laughs> nice. Um, that I think that's pretty much everything I did, uh, video game movie-wise. Uh, I guess the big thing is also yesterday I got a dog, so that's kind of cool. <gasps> what kind, what of, dog? kind of dog? It's mostly a Chihuahua, but oh. uh, it doesn't really look like a Chihuahua. Like it's kind of Chihuahua shaped, but it's definitely bigger <laughs> than a Chihuahua, and its <laughs> its skin fur color is it looks a Pomeranian? Like, um, like a Rottweiler? No, it's not. It's not. It's not long haired at all. Oh, okay. It's got like mostly black fur, but like the orange eyebrows and like the white nose kind of thing going on. Is it orange a eyebrows? It's a rescue. It's a oh, okay. from the SPCA. She's six years old already, so she's really chill. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. I was yeah, gonna say, did, ooh, young did. Chihuahua. Good luck. <laughs> ooh, not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Yeah, I didn't Aww. really look at. I don't. I didn't. I, when I, when I'm looking for a dog. The two criteria are like weight. And they're like between between like 15 and 30 pounds and like temperament other than that i don't really care what the breed is i know breed influences temperament but if the spca but, says they behave this way i trust them <laughs> yeah absolutely and mutts are you i mean i that's I, true I'm for, yeah mutts are usually a bit more even keel to be honest with you so i don't blame you well what's what's her her what's, uh, what's the her name? name she was a surrender so her given name was chubby but she's not chubby they were trying to change it to Ruby because it sounds kind of like Chubby and is a better name. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call something that's not Chubby Chubby. It's just dumb. I don't get it. They don't want came from. Well, Maybe it was fat. I can see why. Maybe it was fat back then. Maybe it's possible at some point. Or the owners are just didn't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, apparently the owners surrendered her because they just had too many dogs. Mm -hmm. so All right. They probably weren't mm -hmm. very close to her. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she. I'm sure you will give her much love. I yeah, intend to. Um, oh, also, Don't you have like a pet cool turtle news. or something? Two rabbits. Rabbits, right. I remember it was like something small. How are the rabbits, are the rabbits yeah. dealing with this? So we've locked, we've not let the dog into the kitchen because initially on the leash, we let her into the kitchen, which is where the rabbits live behind like a baby fence kind of thing. Yeah. And um, the dog was too interested in them. Like, she didn't do anything <laughs> bad, but, like, she's, like, sticking her nose through the fence, like, just getting, like, really close, and the rabbits were, like, kind of freaking out. So it's like, we'll uh, introduce you slower later. They're never going to be, like, friends where they hang out, but I'd like to at least let the dog into the kitchen 
um, and have it just be like not a thing. Oh, yeah. so you're not not gonna start a YouTube channel, or Instagram channel with like two rabbits, one dog, or like? <laughs> oh my gosh! No. That sounds <laughs> like, like a gross viral video. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people get pests these days. That's why you do it. <laughs> That's a good point. I should I should exploit my living friends. Um, <laughs> The last thing I can think of is I have this coworker who's crazy. He bought a very expensive 3D printer and then he didn't like Ooh, it. But okay. He bought a second 3D printer, which he liked. Um, but there are two kinds of 3D printers. There are the kinds of 3D printers, I think they're called like SLA, which like lay out like little layers and they kind of print, mm. they squirt out like, like a thing and it hardens as it goes up. The other kind of printer uh, is like a plate and you put it in a bath of solution. And as the plate rises up, a laser like cures the, the solution fuck? in a pattern i've never seen so that one kind before. of like yeah so i don't that know that's really one. cool yeah so, so there's pros and cons to both the second oh, one is okay. good because it's very very smooth mm. and um there's some like kind of technical things about like what kind of shapes are easy to print the first one is better if you want to print a thing with moving parts um, oh, right so at the end of the day he has three printers two of them Jesus. are pretty redundant so he he lent me one. He's like, you can just hold yeah. on to this because I'm literally not using it uh, until you buy your own. So I have a 3D printer now, and I printed. Oh god! You don't have to buy Warhammer anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, that's not in here. But uh, I printed a big Oddish flower pot. So you can put a flower in the Oddish, and it's like his little sprouty head. Very it's nice. Super cute. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. How did you? You just get it from like some free website. There's a resource, website right? called. Yeah, it's called Thingiverse. Mm. Uh, that's the main one that people just upload yeah. their 3D models to. How detailed did you um, make it? How long did you, how do, how long? Uh, so like the main factor, I'm still learning everything, but the main mm. factor, as far as I can tell, on what influences print time of a given model is um, like layer thickness. Mm. Uh, so I I was going to do 0.2 millimeters per layer, um, but I had another print I did and it was kind of rough. So I tried 0.1 millimeters on this Oddish pot. So the 0.2 millimeter, very tiny model I printed, that took about an hour. The oh. 0.1 millimeter Oddish flower pot took an entire day, like mm. 26 or 27 hours. <laughs> yeah. Did it heat up the room? Um, not too bad. Okay. It, it probably did. You probably could have measured <laughs> it, but I didn't really notice it that much. I also wasn't here most of the time it was running. Yeah. But I started it like at 9 p.m. at night. And then got home, you know, like at seven or eight or whatever. So nice. Uh, the next day. That's pretty fun. Yeah. So I don't really know what I plan on printing next. I might print some like Eve spaceships or something. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's now my, you got a new toy plan. to play with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Tree printers are cool. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's. You it's should just print like those fucking amiibos. It's a, oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Mm. It's like a first taste is free kind of thing where. It's a slip. It's a. I, I. I. You can start a clock now. How long till I buy my own? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and next to the WoW thing, we'll start taking bets. <laughs> you can play WoW and <laughs> just let it print stuff. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> Which I, one you... <laughs> I probably can't record and print at the same time. It's not loud, but it is loud oh, yeah, enough. It's loud, that yeah. Because they're in the same room, I mm. probably couldn't get away with that. Fair enough. Ooh. What'd you do, Char? I did quite a few things. One thing I didn't do is I didn't play Destiny 2. Oh. Wow. I pretty much stopped because expansion is coming on, on uh, October 3rd. And I'm like, okay, I've done quite a lot of things. Other things I can't really do on my own. I need like a team or a clan. I have a clan, but it's not that active. Like a couple of people come on once in a while. Um, like those kind of raids and stuff. So I don't want to just keep repeating it. So I'm going to stop playing and play other shit. And I finished two games before because of that, and I'm in the wow. middle of one more. And I watched a couple of movies. Oh wow! Uh, Black Clansman, I watched that. Oh, how is it? Nice. It's Everything good. Good. It's good. I really like is it. Is it good? Yeah. Okay. It's a bit long winded. Uh, oh, okay. It could be because it's Spike Lee, but um, huh. overall, it's good. I'm. It's it's based on a true story, right? I know the characters are real, like yes. David Duke and the yes. KKK guys. I don't know much about the actual story itself, but that's what I heard. Yes. Yeah, pretty much a black guy uh, masquerades as a white guy, not yes, physically. Something like that. Yeah, not not physically. Yes, yes. through his voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love I love the I love the main guy. It's just so funny, 
and um, what's his name? Darth Adam, Adam Driver. Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah, he's great in that. I actually and I. Adam Driver, it makes me sad how much I don't love him in Star Wars. I don't hate him in Star Wars, but everything else I've seen him in, he's yeah, the he's best great. thing. He's so. great in everything <laughs> right. else except Star Wars. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's the very, character. It's, it's, it's not the character. It's it's not the, him, the yeah. character is difficult and it's not, yeah, exactly. But he's he's great. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Logan him. Lucky. Like I've seen people, you know, they say like, it makes sense in that he's like undeveloped as a child and he's kind of still a kid and stuff like that. Sure. But it's kind of annoying to see it on screen. It's, yeah, I actually love the idea of Kylo Ren, for sure, just in the base of everything. But yes, (laughs) yes, I I do agree. (laughs) And uh, Adam Driver's uh, partner, which I was thinking, why does that guy look like Steve Buscemi? Because he is Michael Buscemi, Steve Buscemi's brother. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) And the funny thing is, he kind of dresses like Steve Buscemi (laughs) in the movie. Like, he dresses like how usually he dresses up for his roles. I'm like, "Is is is he discount Steve Buscemi? So that's kind Basically. of. I mean, he gets paid and shit, but that's kind of shitty to be a discount of your brother, I suppose. Um, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I don't think like, man, we want Steve Buscemi for this role, but we can't afford him. I think he probably just applied, and they're like, mm. you know, he yeah. got the job on his own merit. Yeah. <laughs> I hope but so. At least he is <laughs> inevitable. His performance will always be compared to Steve Buscemi because he looks and sounds like Steve Buscemi. <laughs> yeah, he looks exactly like Steve Buscemi. Just. Slightly older, I suppose. Or maybe he's younger. I'm not sure if he's the older brother or younger brother. <laughs> Who knows? He looks like, they, they look the same age. <laughs> They're pretty similar. They're yeah. twins! <laughs> um, yeah, maybe. So yeah, Black Clansman was great. Uh, wasn't really too hot on the end credits, what they did. Because they showed footage of the Charleston mm. um, n- n- a neo-Nazi march yeah, yeah. or something. With the car oh. driving through the crowd, right? yeah, and the anti pro and oh, the wow. anti not the protesters from yes, and the, the the car that killed that. Um, how many people did they like one woman or something, right? He did At kill least. one woman yeah. for sure. I don't know if he actually and killed. And they should the footage of people. the car driving into the crowd. Wow. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't know about this because people should know about this, but I'm saying it I feels was not prepared. Number one, I wasn't prepared. Number two. I felt it was kind of shitty to be put into a for-profit movie, kind of like mm. I don't know. It's exploiting just exploiting the yeah, suffering yeah, of others, pretty much. Yeah, it's just. I mean, it could, especially that he could have given some money to wh- like whatever foundation, whatever, but yeah. it still feels kind of exploitative in the end. But well, that's Spike Lee for you, that I suppose. He's yeah. not especially that particular. He's not very subtle, Spike Lee. No. He's not very. He's yeah, not known for his subtlety. Um. But overall, it was a good movie. I think like two and a half hours, two fifteen hours, two hours fifteen minutes. Mm. It's a pretty good watch. Oh wow! Long movie. Yeah. Okay. Some really good parts. Some really funny parts. Some um, just great. Um, I also watched Godzilla, the newest one, not the Japanese one, yes. the American one. I watched it too. Did I mention that? No. I don't I remember I'm not it was sure. before the last episode or not. I, I watched it as well. Did you like it? <laughs> I liked. You like the Godzilla but fighting liked, shit part, right? Yeah. But I also, I wanted to like, the one part that really frustrated me about the fighting was I didn't like Rodan's scene as much as I wanted to. Because I thought mm. the jet fighters, I thought all the humans were so dumb. Yep. They always it are. They always are. Dumb. And I don't know yeah. why the critics, number one criticism is the humans need to be better. No, we just need more Godzilla. Like, n- n- just don't put the yeah, humans yeah, in. Yeah. Yep. It's because there was a, a good amount of monsters in this movie. There was, was a nice. good... Also, good amount of monsters and good amount of action. It was really monsters. funny how the main actress, they cast her because she looks just like an older version of um, Elizabeth Olsen. Who they couldn't what? get to come back. Because she's the same character. It's supposed to be Elizabeth Olsen again. Oh. But it's not, the actress is not Elizabeth Olsen. It's just someone who looks kind of like her. Wait, Elizabeth Olsen was in the first one? Yeah. The previous American one. Oh, she's like the wife to the soldier or something, right? Yes. And she, she is no. who in this movie? She's supposed to be the main character. The scientist who develops the frequency. The scientist is uh, the wife? Yes. Are you sure about that? Seriously? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> okay. There's some dialogue where she's like, oh, our son. Because she, she broke up with the guy. No, but the scientist had a has a husband, right? In the newer movie. Just the ex-husband. 
Who is the yeah, husband from the who is not movie? a soldier? They were. Is, I'm so uh, confused with the timeline right now. You guys are all I can find out. Also, the plot doesn't really matter for yeah, this movie. Really <laughs> <Yeah>. Godzilla. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that uh, sound effect of his lightning is so good. Do, 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 it was do, a really do, do, stupid do. plot. I'm just gonna spoil it now because if you watch a Godzilla movie, America Godzilla movie for the. Uh, it's about a bunch of people wanting to reset the world by releasing the monsters to destroy it. Tywin Lannister. It's like, I'm going to use monsters to bring about the apocalypse and then I'll live in the world because the monsters, I don't know, will go away or something. But, um... Right. Uh, what's his name? King, uh, King Ghidorah. Oh my god, he's so awesome in this one. The effects yeah. are super, super nice. Yeah. They made Mothra kind of badass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mothra was pretty good too. So I watched those two back to back. So... <laughs> Um, I also fucking fall. I'm reading comics now. Jesus, fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> Which one? So, so you're on currently, I was just like, I just got Comicsology, and I just tried out the uh, Comicsology Comicsology Unlimited free trial for like thirty days, and they should name Unlimited to Limited. Son of a bitch, it's not <laughs> unlimited at all. No one, not yeah. all comics is just a certain amount, and each series is not all issues. Oh gosh! Yeah, so uh, that's s infuriating. So saga first three volumes, East of West first four first taste volumes. Is free. Um, the boys about halfway. I think that's like sixty issues, and it's about thirty something, something like that. About fifty okay. percent. I read. Yeah, it's like twelve trades. So yeah, like seventy issue issues. Or whatever. So I'm like, saga was amazing. East of West was amazing. I'm also really enjoying the boys. Yeah. I really like the They're Image Comics one. The Image Comics one is... Yeah. Image and Dark Horse are where it's at, man. Forget yeah. Marvel and DC. Yeah. They're good, but Image and Dark Horse... <laughs> yeah, I, I read, yeah, I read like true. Venom and like Spawn and some Spider-Man Carnage and Batman stuff. And I'm like, it's not even close to all the Image ones. That is just... Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm uh, looking to getting the fucking hardcovers now. Son of a bitch. Mm. Mm, that's how they get you. <laughs> <laughs> But there's East of well, Saga. I've got plenty like, more recommendations when you're done with that lot. I'm still. I still haven't uh, read uh, Man Manhattan Project. Wait, what? The Manhattan Project. Pro Project. Uh, and Fables. Fables. I'm, re stuff. I'm reading into uh, uh, just started that. Fables is long. That'll take a while. Mm. That's like twenty. And they have like a lot of spin-offs and stuff, right? Like the Cinderella yeah, one. Yeah, there's Jack of Fables. There's um uh. Ferris, like the girls of fables. Cinderella is a spy assassin type thing. Yeah. Yep. And it's like a, there's actually like a Wolf Among Us comic as well. Yes. Oh, uh, oh I yeah. Haven't read all this. I've only read fables. Is it just based on the game? Like, like, you know, I think so. you know they should just read it. they should just do a sequel comic. It would be really so happy with that. So I was talking to I would be I'd love that. I was talking to my coworker who used to work at Telltale. And he was saying oh, yeah. it hadn't started work or anything, but the the plan for Wolf Among Us season two had been following Snow White during World War Two, which sounds Ooh. awesome. So, super cool. <laughs> oh. I still I never played the first one, and I kind of don't want to because I'm scared yeah. of the really bad. <laughs> no, just just play it. It's so good. It, it stands know, alone. I know. Like the Wolf I Among know. Us and Tales of uh, from the from the Borderlands, Tales of the Borderlands, whatever. From or of? Of? I think yeah. it's from Tales Borderlands Tales. Like those two kind of stands head and shoulders, and and mm -hmm. the Walking Dead season one, I think, simply for nostalgia. Oh yeah, yeah. I've done season one. I did do season one. That's those really those good. three kind I of like stand head and shoulders above I the rest. Know. I feel. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, uh, I do intend to play Walking Dead season four. I think I'm gonna skip three. I do want to kind of try out four. There is a That's four the last coming one, right? out. No, the last one's yeah. out. Yeah. It's yeah, like, oh, there was a four. It's the last one. I it's, just found yeah. out there was a three, so I'm totally out of the ballpark. Uh, but I'm not sure if all video. episodes are out. I know it's oh. coming out. Is it out, okay. all of them? No idea. I, I, I assumed so because I thought it came out a long time ago, but maybe I, did, uh, I haven't been following it that closely. Because I assumed, like, I didn't play three, so I shouldn't play four. But the same coworker is like, you can play four. We didn't really pay attention to three at all. <laughs> we didn't really continue <laughs> anything from it. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, uh, I also want to tr try out The Wicked and the Divine. I'm not sure what that's about. Another image comic. What's it called? Wicked? The Wicked plus the Divine. I don't recognize that name. And I also downloaded Monstrous. Also I've image comics. That. Ooh, I like the art for Wicked and Divine. It looks yeah, the cover just, just like kind of saga. grabbed me. 
And I love Saka so much. Holy shit, they, they're so real. Like, the way they talk, like, just the dialogue and like everything. anybody just... who likes Steven Universe will like Saga. <gasps> I forgot to mention something related to Steven Universe, but I'll hold oh, it. Oh, yes, the movie. the movie. I saw the movie. I, I forgot the movie to mention too. I forgot that. to mention that, too. <sighs> Is it because it's not memorable? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I liked it, actually. No, opposite. I actually really liked it. I just forgot <laughs> I liked it. seen it's... it because it's been forever to go. I wasn't expecting it to be a full-on musical, though. Oh, see, I already hmm. I did know that because uh, okay. I read a uh, I, uh, I didn't know that um, uh, yes, I'm fine I with read that. a uh, I yeah. some of the songs were really good. My favorite songs were the ones by Spinell. Oh, I mean, um, other friends is the best song in the entire yep. the entire uh, episode. That shit Absolutely. is on repeat every time I I might work. Yes, we've been putting out on repeat over here at yeah. the house. <laughs> so no, there, I liked some of the other songs though too, but that one was definitely the best song. <laughs> but just like Steven Universe, all the normal stuff, uh, nobody gets punished for anything, and everybody everything is Rose's fault. <laughs> everything is fucking Pink Diamond Rose's fault. Everything every, I know, easy. everything is Rose's fault. I know, but I mean at the same, I mean. It's all, I mean, that's what the whole story is all about. They yeah. can't have an ultimate enemy. Mm. I don't know what, the only thing that's a little bit weird is I, I'm excited to see what they do in the next season, but I also is have no idea. I don't, we don't know. Oh, we okay. just know that there mm. is going to be another season. We just have no idea what's happening. I, um, I wouldn't mind if they gave uh, Peridot her own series. Oh, can they do Peridot and Lapis, please? Yeah. <laughs> Even in the Please? movie, they didn't get that much screen time. They didn't That's get really much annoying. at all. I know. That was criminal. Yeah. We've been like, ugh, I just want them to fuse so badly. Anyway, that's just my personal oh, yeah. pathos. <laughs> so badly. The but new yeah, fusion, um, though, that's pretty cool in this one. Ah, that was, it was super. I was. It was a little bit weird, but also pretty cool. I know. It was. We, we kind of, when they first were like whispering, I, I was sitting there going, are, are they, they gonna really going to fuse? Oh my god! <laughs> That was totally unexpected. And it's really weird because to me, fusion is a very like, uh, from what I kind of understand it or not understand, like what I kind of think it is, it's like quite intimate. Yes, yeah, it is totally. intimacy. Um, they've always played around the idea that is intimacy and in however you wish to define that. Mm. So it doesn't have to be sexually intimate. Um, it's just that for the gems, it often is, but not always. Um, like I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, basically, any of the other fusions that the gem, the three main gems do among themselves, um, you know, is and intimate as far as a friendship, but not in a romantic way. Wasn't the there uh, a character, an evil character, who like forced a fusion? Yes. Yeah. With, yes, uh, that would Lapis. be Lapis and Jasper. Yeah. Lapis and Jasper, and that yeah, was meant to be. Jasper. It was, I mean, that's one thing I kind of. That's part of the reason I got interested in the show because it was one of the first shows that showed the true like. Um, difficulty of those abusive relationships because what I really liked about it is I love Lapis's character but she very much is flawed in that situation too she's which broken as fuck very yeah which is very real in yeah. um, abusive relationships where it's not you know abusive relationships if you've experienced it before it's not like the person who's 100% innocent just getting beaten down by an evil person mm -hmm. You're going to fight back eventually, you know, and you're going to do things that seem wrong, but you're in a situation that's like a survival situation. So it's very real. Um, and so that's it's a very adult explanation. But, yes, that was an example of kind of like a forced, like it was an abusive relationship fusion. And as Garnet says, they are not good together. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I liked the movie a lot. Um, I had no idea what they were going to do for Spinell. Um, it pretty much, I'm not surprised the route they went to it. Um, but at least it, uh, at least it ends happy. <laughs> it, what is different though, what is different about the movie, and I guess kind of a spoiler, um, Spinell does not get to have a friendship with Steven and the Gems. She ruined that chance. Mm. So now she's got to start over with a different relationship with somebody else, which is kind of kind of the point, which is very unique for Steven. He's usually willing to forgive and forget a lot, but this was the one that he was like, I am, I can't, <laughs> you gotta go. And she's like, yep, I gotta go. <laughs> I messed this up, which is also very real. We have those relationships that we mess up with people and like, that's kind of it. We got to start over with somebody else. So I liked it a lot. But Why do you say uh, a, anybody that likes Steven Universe will like Saga? I didn't get that vibe. I think just because it's so well, relationship like, oh. heavy, uh, and okay. uh, I don't like 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 it focuses on like Amory just kind of in a broad way. Mm. Got it. Okay, yeah, I get it. 
Yeah, it's less about of, um, like it's sci-fi, but it's less like about the sci-fi and relationships. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like a relationship between a, a a man and a female spider centaur with no arms, or a relationship mm. between uh, like an aquatic guy and another aquatic guy. Or like, I mean, the whole the whole thing is kind of about like the wings and the horns. Mm. Like, oh, there can't be love between a winged person and a person with horns. This is outrageous. We must suppress this, or else people will realize that peace can be a thing. So the war must go on, so the money can roll in. And all that. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Not always romantic love, of course, but just relationships and togetherness yes. and stuff like that. Tight friendships, like uh, yes. especially between people and like pets too. That's a big one that comes up a lot. Mm. Mm. And raising children, messages that children pick up on. God, it's a lot. I don't know, a lot of same messages, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Total, I totally, I get you. I get what you're saying. It's not lesbian space rocks, but <laughs> it's no, not lesbian space rocks. <laughs> So, I cannot uh, take credit for that phrase. A different friend of mine made that up. <laughs> uh, Godzilla, Black Clansman, comic books. I played a bunch of shit. Did I mention I finished Bloodstained? The previous episode? You didn't. I don't recall that anyway. Yeah, I finished Bloodstained. I know you were playing it. Yeah. I don't think you finished it. I think you are just um, playing it. I'm not going to 100% that game because I don't 100% games. But I got <laughs> the true ending. And oh. I got uh, like a bunch of weapons and... I also defeated the guy that kind of is supposed to be Dracula. He's like oh, the librarian nice. in the game and he he's funny. So like uh he's a librarian. Uh when you first meet him, you can get you can borrow one book and a, a book will like increase stats. So your strength whatever, your moving speed, your attack speed. Uh you eventually get to borrow two and then three books, three books max. And eventually you'll be able to borrow a really powerful book where it increases like three, four different things. And um, he said, this particular one, you must return. So to to trigger the boss fight, you don't return the book and you kind of just at the really, at the end area, there will be one place where he will show up if you don't return the book. You defeat him. When you go back to his... Uh, uh, library you will see him there and your character will be like i thought i killed you and then he's like i'm immortal mm-hmm. but because you've mm-hmm. defeated me i'm now your bitch and you can take all the books now <laughs> all uh, all 21 cool. books um so yeah that's one of those things like the secret boss if you yeah. beat him he's just like way harder than the final boss uh, and makes he, you so powerful I, final be- boss is a joke. I believe he is supposed to be more difficult than the end boss but i was really over overpowered already by the time i fought him gotcha I mean, Dark Souls generally has, like, the the secret optional boss mm. who's harder yeah. than the regular boss. Did, this, 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 it's a, it's a Japanese thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like Final Fantasy. Yeah. That's it, all, that, yeah. all the GRPGs. But yeah, Bloodstained was amazing. It was great. It, it played shitty on the Switch. And I saw a 60 FPS one that was played on, like, the PS4. And I'm like, holy shit, it looks so different. <laughs> but uh, it was a great time. I loved it. I really recommend it if you really love uh, Castlevania because it's pretty much Castlevania. Um, finished that. Uh, I also finished Control, the game. Oh, you finished it? That yep. was pretty fast. Yeah, it's not long. It's uh, They do have side quests. Um, there are side quests that you can finish and it will just be finished. There are also like uh, mm, situational things like you'll be playing the game and then like, Oh, there are enemies. You might want to kill them. And then so you can, like, you know, just use the fast travel points to move around and kill enemies, get rewards. Uh, the rewards mm-hmm. is basically, like, um, character upgrades, uh, ingredients to create more upgrades and gun upgrades, stuff like that. Overall, the game is pretty cool. It has a really interesting theme going on with the paranormal stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's not, like, ghost paranormal. It's, like scp paranormal kind of stuff so if you're into that it's like it's really good Uh, my favorite parts about the game is so event past the halfway point it kind of got repetitive for me you kind of just do the same stuff and the combat while fun i think is not like i uh, there was a lot of combat in this one I feel like that's a kind of a common problem with like these mid-tier games. Yeah. Where it's like an indie team trying to do something really big and they just kind of pad but it. But also, it's also a $60 game. Oh, gosh. Yep. And it's by Remedy, mm-hmm. so they're not exactly indie. Yeah, you're right. I guess yeah. they're not 
tied to a publisher, but they're pretty big with all the Max Paynes and all this other stuff they've made. I, I, I'll guess they're, they're more like the double A, like, you know, just a tier sure. below. I wouldn't recommend that at 60, though. It's not, it's not the best game. 40 bucks is a pretty good number, I think. 50, maybe. But 40 is like, you know. There are very few games that are worth 60 bucks these days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just putting it the, out there. The great thing about the game is the start. Like, it starts mm-hmm. off with so many... You have so many mm-hmm. questions. There's so many so mm-hmm. much, so many mysteries going on. And you just start learning more and more. And you pick up all these, like... Like, letters and all these audio clips and video clips. And they what they've done is they really did a very good job in building the lore and building the world. But there was no payoff, which kind of plays into the whole mystery thing as well. But um, I'm not so pissed off at about the payoff of the story, but more of the last level design. It was just waves and waves of enemies with no mm. boss fight at the end. And I'm like, oh, this is kind what? of, this is a weird ending. And All right. Uh, yeah, I wasn't so hot on that. But overall, the game is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it at 60 bucks though. 40 at, at most, I would say. I would recommend it at 30 for sure. I, uh, Epic don't track playtime. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but... No. Uh, oh my god, is this playtime? Um, but I'm gonna guess I played around 15 hours. Like feature. Yeah, 15 hours. Um, That's way too short for $60. Yeah. The, the telekinesis and all were felt really fun and stuff, but... It's not a sixty dollar game just for that though, and they're gonna have like paid DLCs coming up, um, but yeah, uh, it's also in the same universe as Alan Wake. So if people are into that, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Alan Wake. <laughs> so there are these things called AWEs, like altered world events in Control. They basically talk about how these things from the other dimension comes into this world and causes a big chaotic event, and they'll call each of those an alter, altered world event and they classify the Alan Wake one as one of those AWEs. So I thought it was pretty cool, you know. Maybe they'll continue with um, a franchise going forward or something. For fans of Alan Wake, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Control. I would recommend it 30 bucks. Okay, good to know. I'll add it to my Steam wish list when that's an option. And yes. for sales. <laughs> it is, right? It's going to come much. out like six months or a year or something. Probably. Mm. <laughs> I would assume so anyway. Mm. I don't have any facts to back that up. Also, there's like difficulty spikes. Like you'll be fighting mm. like mobs and mobs of enemies, which can be quite tough sometimes. But then you reach the boss fight. And I'm like, holy shit. The difficulty just spike right the hell up. So there are bosses, but no final boss. That's, oh. Yep. That's really annoying. Um. Uh, the last thing I did is I am seven hours into Darksiders 3. That was the one I decided to play next oh, because cool. I, oh, because I really like the Dark Side franchise. I bought this game for a few months now, so I thought you know I should play it. <laughs> it feels weird because they were going for a more methodical rather than a hack and slash combat system. Okay, mm-hmm. so they're trying to go more Dark Soulsy. Yeah, Is that's, that's, even more that's methodical. That's okay. basically what people uh, compared it to. It feels more Dark Souls because you gotta really time your dodges and stuff. Oh, um, I see. So, like, it's not completely 100% Dark Souls. There's no stamina bar. There's no... Um, there's no... Uh, I don't know. When it comes to Dark Souls, what I think about is... Stamina bars and all that is, like, easy to see. But there's also the whole um, specific enemies for specific parts of the level. And it's just, like, the design is based kind of around that. And there's no such thing here. So that's, So I feel like... It's a very cheap way of what they wanted to do, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And because it's not supposed to be a triple A game, it's supposed to be another like double A title, but it's also launched at sixty dollars. I'm like, uh, anyways, mm, but I got it for like seventy percent off or something. So, um, so a lot of people were not happy because the past two Dark Souls game, uh, the Dark Siders games Dark Siders. were yes, um, yeah, hack yeah. and slash games, right? 
So they actually came, uh, they patched it a bunch of times and one of the patches introduced a classic mode. So default mode is your default Darksiders 3 combat that it launched with. And then classic mode is more hack and slashy like the previous games, which means you can like dodge in the middle of an attack animation, that kind of thing. Cool. And you don't... That's yeah. broken. When you heal... Awesome. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's broken in the... It's not... <sighs> The previous games played like that. It was faster paced. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even then, it's still difficult. Like, I just felt... Yeah, that's fair. I still felt punished, and I feel like I didn't have the tools to make it less punishing. I don't know Uh, why. uh. Or maybe I'm just getting older, and you know how you get (laughs) suckier games as you get older. You just don't have it anymore. Yeah. Uh, It's easier now a little bit, though, because I just got, like, an item that enhances my um, timing window for dodges. So it feels... It, it feels like what the game should have been, I feel. I don't know. It's just... Um, it's a... You know, it's a double-A game. It, I'm not so hot on it. I'm just going to finish it because it's a Darksiders game. I'm not hating it. It's just that um, I felt like the environmental puzzles are like kind of meh. The combat's okay. Sometimes they send too many waves. And it's just... Is the plot interesting? Uh, I found the in the lore and the first game's plot to be interesting, but I feel like I still, I feel like they still haven't really built on it properly yet because they're still kind of in that building phase, because all these games, Darksiders one, two, and three, they are happening uh parallel to each other, right. So, right now they're still at the base and they're kind of still building it, and it feels okay. like you know you play the first game and you play the second game where death is like you know you play death in the second game and when the second game is happening the first game was also happening and the third one is basically the same thing and it just feels like there's no payoff i see over yeah. three fucking games it's not even like the same game is tr- over three games um so the third game you play fury she she can change like different elements and she has a sword whip like uh the iv from soul caliber sword whips are cool that's right. that's that they are cool. They are yep. fucking cool. Um, Fact. Yeah. Fact. Fact. <laughs> Is the weapon in Saga considered a sword whip? Not really. Kinda. I don't remember which weapon it is. Uh, the, wi- the, the, the will. The will's weapon. The will's weapon? Maybe. I have to go look it up again. Kind of shoots the blades out, but she can. they can kind of whip it out, kind of. I'd have to look it up again. I don't think he has it very long. The only thing I remember about the bounty hunters are their awesome pets, like the lion yeah, cat and the, the lion sweet cat. boy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I did quite a lot of things. I'm, uh, continue playing Dark Side Street and maybe try to get into Xenoblade 2 or something. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. But time commitment. Oh, okay. Uh, DMC 5 is on sale right now, mm. but not by much. I actually have it. I've tried it out a little bit. I still haven't played it much, so I can't say too much yet. But uh, you can use like three different characters and stuff. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, cool. I just noticed we've been talking for almost an hour and we haven't gone into news yet. Shit. I know. We <laughs> okay, news time. Well, we did a lot in three weeks. That is true. It's true. At least we didn't waste our time. Um, <laughs> just the listener's time. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about news. News time, real quick. Yeah. Uh, let's go into our our section of uh, the Epic Games bullshit. Yeah, mm. let's Let's talk about that. that. So, first thing, uh, uh, let's talk about <laughs> what company is using <laughs> the uh, we're not gonna do exclusive like Epic Games store shtick. Uh, this time it's GOG. CD Projekt, Red CD Projekt, you know, the people who are the brother-sister company, whatever, of the people who made The Witcher 3 and the upcoming Cyberpunk. They are saying, mm. with GOG, we will not do exclusives. So there you go. Easy marketing. Good on you. Cool. Nice. Um, I didn't know about uh, uh, Metropolis doing pre-sales on Steam and then last minute saying, actually, Metropolis? we're going to launch uh, Exodus? No, what's it, what's it am I thinking of? Uh Metro, uh, Metro, 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 right? Yeah, they they had they had pre sales on Steam and then changed like their thing and uh, launched on Epic first. So I don't. I think the pre sales still have their money locked in Steam until the game launches oh, no, no, months no, no, no. down the, the road. No. The people who no, they got refunds. No, they actually got a game 
on Epic? Oh, they still bought the game on Steam. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, that's a little weird though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that was like the first <laughs> exclusive. I believe it was the first one. And that was really handled poorly. So yes, uh, remember that I'm game indie game Dark D A R Q with a Q for with a Q. With a Q, I do remember talking about it. Yes, yes. because you Google Dark with a K and you were like, "What is this?" How silly of me! <laughs> <laughs> but basically, um, the previous news was uh, EGS Epic Game Store was like, "Hey, guy, do you want to?" release your game exclusively on our store and it was like uh no guy because um, <laughs> i've built a following and a lot of them have wishlisted on steam guy so no and he was like do you want me to sell it on your store anyways but not exclusively and epic games like no thank you and everybody's like oh my god <laughs> epic games fuck you epic games bad and yeah, now the remember. most recent one not recent it's 18 days ago but three weeks you know no episode um the dark developer on twitter basically told tim sweeney if you change your mind accept dark to your store non-exclusively i'll donate 100 percent of my egs revenue to a charity if you accept the charity can be picked by the gaming community at a later date wow people are Great. really harping on this aren't they <laughs> i mean it's just good marketing it's really smart i know it's that's what it's good for right now. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I do not know the. Uh, it's probably not. It's probably not uh, accepted by EGS anyway. So, that's that. So yeah, uh, that's a thing. Cool. Uh, I wonder which charity. Let's talk about charities and Cute. PewDiePie. Oh, oh no! I actually didn't, I I actually didn't hear about this. I saw a brief thing about this, but I didn't know what the details were. I didn't hear about this. What did he do <sighs> now? <laughs> why? Why did I put this news on my fucking list? Jeez. <laughs> I don't know. Now you have to say low. it. <laughs> we Come on. About what is it? Okay, so PewDiePie. Does he still do that? What? Is he still? I have no idea. One? I have no idea. Dude, I don't even watch his videos. Yeah. I think I've watched I've like two in my entire life. Honestly, he. He's actually very self-aware. He's not stupid. I, oh, no, he is. I, I believe it. I've watched a lot of... Not a lot. I don't watch his gaming stuff. I watch his... Uh, when he talks about some serious things like that. Uh, remember that yeah. time where there's this like it's website app good. that was going around um, getting sponsorships, uh, sponsoring YouTubers, and they were basically a um, get psychological help on the internet. And I'm not sure if you remember this. No. So no, I don't. a bunch of big guys were spons sponsored by them, uh, including the guy that oh, that does no. the news every weekdays. What's his name? Jeez. The white guy that talks oh. real fast. Is it James Franco's brother? Yes. What's his name? Philip DeFranco. Yes, yes. So, so, you know, when he talks about serious things, you can see how like intelligent and aware he is, but... So anyways, mm -hmm. uh, Pewdie PewDiePie has 100 million subscribers now. Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. And you know how he's... And he was saying like um, he regrets a lot of the things he's done like uh, asking people oh. to say all those really shitty things about Jewish people and all those other things that yeah, he's done. Yeah, that was the like Fiverr thing. Yeah, yeah the Fiverr thing yeah. and stuff. So he pledged oh, yeah. He pledged to donate $50,000. Not his money, by the way. It's by a company. A company is giving him $50,000. I don't understand that, but okay. What? A company is giving him $50,000 to um to give to the Anti-Defamation -def League, ADL, which basically <laughs> works, works <laughs> to... Uh, to quell anti-Semitic views, those kind of stuff. Oh, specifically, okay. Yeah, so okay. um, okay. he he uploaded another video like yesterday and said he didn't know much. He don't he didn't know much about the ADL when he made the pledge. Okay. It was only after uploading the video and seeing feedback about the organization that he didn't know a lot of things that surfaced through this whole thing about charity. And he is now pulling the money and decided that he's going to. Uh, slowly decide who he wants to give it to. Um, Wait, what was wrong with the first choice? Why'd he pull out? He didn't actually say. Oh. Huh. 
Because he just hates and a lot of that pe- much. Maybe. And he, um, <laughs> no, there may be something wrong with the organization. Where right? is he from? Like Sweden or something, right? right? Is he Swedish, Norwegian yeah. or something? Yeah. Something like something. that, yeah. Uh, and then he was... Uh, in this video, he was wearing a, uh, a shirt uh, with like a collar that has like an iron cross looking symbol on it. And... Like a German kind of thing? At first quick glance, it kind of looks like the Nazi Iron Cross thing. Oh. Yeah. But it's not really. Okay. But when you have a video up talking about pulling a donation... Wanna, yeah, as distant as possible. Yeah, you want to not do that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's move on from PewDiePie. Oops. PewDiePie. Okay. Anyway. Sounds good so, to me. I just love how it's like not even his money. Like, yeah. What? I don't understand. He makes like fifty billion dollars a year or something. I, Fact. I looked up ADL, the Anti Defamation League, and apparently there's been some criticism for it because of its support for Israel, which uh, has mm. whatever. Yeah. Domestic uh. spying allegations, and I guess a former stance on the Armenian genocide. So I guess it's like very pro. Yeah. Um, Are they kind of like PETA, where they just go too far? Probably. I can't. I this. I learned just read this from the Wikipedia page. And so also, I'd have to um, really. The ADL was one of the ones that really harped on the whole get uh getting Disney to get rid of PewDiePie, because Disney was under PewDiePie, mm. right? Uh, sorry, Pe- PewDiePie. Was, okay, PewDiePie is not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, practically. Mm. So yeah, um, so I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say that his fans were probably pissed off at that more than the other stuff that Sarah just mentioned. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just <laughs> because Gosh, I, I... the last people I want to give the benefits of the doubt to is PewDiePie fans. Like yeah. <laughs> I know. Seriously. So, yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. Okay. Really More weird it. decisions by a guy. That's good. By man. Um, cyberpunk won't let you choose your gender, and gamers are pissed off at that. Oh, I thought no. you were going to say the bigger news story where the cyberpunk announced that Keanu Reeves is not one of the romantic options in the game. Seriously? I know. Mm-hmm. Did they finally announce that? Oh. The tragic, tragic, tragic news. So I kind of jacked on his tragic. immaculate hair. That's what you're saying. No, in, not in the video game. This only is in the unrealistic. Of your mind. This is not realistic <laughs> at all. I mean, that's the that's the tra- that's the tragic news there. But yeah, no, uh, lots of gamers are mad because they've decided. Which to Which is fucking open funny. Gender. Oh, it's so <laughs> it great. It's pretty funny. It's so great. Because also, I bet Gosh. almost none of them are gonna put their money where their mouths are. They're all gonna play it oh, anyway. Absolutely, they're gonna play it anyway. Yeah. Not only that. Are you kidding me? Gamers being pissed off at gender options, of all things. Choices. I so I, know. I think, I mean, I'm not trying to explain their behavior, but I feel like there's a lot of, uh, like, the impression was that if I choose, like, a, if I want to be a boy character, it's just going to, like, randomly assign, like, feminine attributes to it anyway. Like, I can't be the character I want to be, which is obviously not true. Every, is everything true? is on a slider. Like, you can literally... Yeah. Like so many it, things you can customize. Meant, yeah, I mean and you can. It's just it's more such customizing. A cool idea. And it wasn't. Idea. I love it. This is not new. Saints Row has been doing it. Yeah, yeah. It's also mm. not. It's not a new all. thing. It's just. It's just being placed now in a triple A title, and it's. I mean, and it's also just the same tired guys. It's cyberpunk. Mad. It's, it's that's kind of the I point. Know. It's these are just the same guys that anything that's different like that they're basically crying political correctness, which is it's not first of all, but that's what they're basically decrying that it's all political stuff and they're just catering to SJWs. It's the same old tired trope, and yeah, they're just gonna I buy the game anyway. I must say that anyway, catering so. to SJWs would be removing the male option and just being a female. <laughs> It depends on your definition of that. I suppose. True, I guess. <laughs> but like giving everybody <laughs> options, I don't think is. Uh, okay, so um, NBA 2K20 just released, mm-hmm. and you know what NBA 2K20 is, right? It's the, it's the basketball. It's the gam- best basketball. basketball game of all time. It's the gambling simulator with the basketball mini game. Oh yeah! Ah. Uh. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, um, right. so I saw the reviews. All the user reviews are like, "This is shit," because they just keep. Making it worse and worse so that you... That's what I've heard. And no, it's not just the the gambling portion of it. It's not just using microtransactions because your progress is so fucking slow. It's also the fact that gameplay-wise, they've been making it worse. Like, everything just feels clunkier mm. and, like... 
So it's not easy to make a squats games because these uber uber athletes move like nobody's business, and it's very hard to sim- <laughs> simulate that in a video game, I suppose, and make it like kind of realistic. Uh, because you got to see all these motherfuckers moving. They, they don't look realistic at all. And um, you can't make, like, the character that you want. So, like, you can't make a guy that's huge but also quick and sh- that can shoot from far, even though that's actually a thing in real life. So they've been, like, mm-hmm. making just really bad decisions. On top of the progress just being shit, everything else, you know, the story mode is being shit. But the funny thing is, Critics are still giving a sevens and eights out of times, and it just pisses me off. Wow! Mm. And it's just like, what's what's even the point? Gosh, they have such a monopoly on those kinds of games. Oh, by the way, there's also a casino in the game, so yeah. <laughs> so it's gonna get banned. I think I saw in other a countries. video from the game where like they didn't even change uh, like one of the banners in the arena, so it still says the previous NBA, like two K. Oh yeah, I think I, I like think remember sixteen or whatever. <laughs> like they. Just, it didn't even bother completing the reskin. It's not even new content. Yeah. It's not even a full reskin. It's just like a lazy yeah. rap. So the Nintendo Direct was a thing. It was on the 4th of September. A bunch of things. Watch. Overwatch is coming out on October 15th mm-hmm. for the Switch. Yes. Overwatch? Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. I see. 30 FPS goodness, I suppose. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing. I didn't know that game was still played. Yeah, I suppose so. Oh, absolutely. I thought like Apex Legends and stuff, it kind of replaced it. No, Apex nah. actually hasn't been doing very yeah. well. The it, first couple of months has been it was well it was good but not it was good and now it's pretty much yeah it didn't have a good opening season or whatever so no Overwatch is still pretty high out there it's really huge in the esports world so mm, interesting uh, good for Blizzard Town yes the new game by um, the Pokemon people is coming out in October as well I believe but they have uh, announced the full name is called Little Town Hero and Toby Fox is making the music. Yes, that's what I heard. The I'm kind of to hear that. Which is interesting. Yeah. Super cool. Um, I mean, makes good music, so yeah. I'm not complaining. <laughs> uh, Terry from Fatal Fury is a new character to Smash. Um, they also Sounds announced... the costume. They also announced uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which was a JRPG for the Wii U exclusively, is getting a remastered Director's Cut Edition coming to the Switch mm. next year. I believe next year. Cool. Um, they are also remaking Xenoblade Chronicles 1 that was uh, on the Wii mm-hmm. and 3DS. New, new 3DS that is also coming mm-hmm. out next year. I believe Tokyo Mirage Session is coming out next January. So it's the first one that's coming out. Uh, so yeah, more JRPGs. That's cool. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, the Nintendo Switch Online has added Super Nintendo games. So if you have that, go go get your Super Nintendo games. Uh, mm. 20 games launch uh, it's, lo- it's gonna launch with 20 games direct- straight away but now you know how every month they add like 2-3 new games to the NES one yeah they're not doing that no more it's gonna be random nobody knows when new games are coming out because Nintendo and Nintendo <laughs> Nintendo is Nintendo indeed <laughs> uh, have you guys do you guys know uh, the game Deadly Premonition Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it's that's the picture taking one, right? Picture taking. No, 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 no. Sorry. No, sorry, no. that's the fatal one, the, frame. The killer? No. Is that what he's called? It's no, a it's horror JRPG ish survival game, Twin Peaks style, yeah. Japanese. It. Yeah. Japan, the guy's Japanese raincoat killer one. Raincoat killer. Yeah. Is that raincoat killer? Yep. It might be. But so anyway. deadly premonition origin. Um, yeah, that's raincoat killer. Out. It's a heavy rain. Uh, anyways. Um, no, no, that's no. origami killer. All right. I would understand how you would get them confused. Um, yeah. So that game has been out for a long it's a time. Cool time thing. The first yeah, game is now going to come out for the Switch, and they just announced that the second game is going to be exclusive to the Switch. I believe exclusive. I probably should finish it. I never finished. I it. think <laughs> that was the game that got me into the Super Best Friends channel. Was there? Uh, let's play it to the premonition. Huh. I wouldn't be. I think they did play it. Yeah, it's a weird game. I never finished yeah, it. it but real it's, weird. It's really weird. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. They also have a uh, physical edition for the first game, which is cool. It comes with like pins and badges and stuff. I like pins and badges. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Um. Just yeah, Divinity Original Sin Two is out on the Switch as well. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff actually. A lot of really cool yeah. things. 
pretty cool. So yes, let's get to the shitty things. Okay. We already talked about a couple of them. <laughs> I know. I thought like, this is the shittiest oh one. Uh oh. Right. Let's start with this one. Okay. Chucklefish. Chucklefish is a developer slash publisher of indie games. Mm-hmm. They were the ones they published. Wait, hold on. Let me just double check. What's that uh, farming game that's really popular? Stardew Valley. Stardew Star- Valley. Star- Valley. I'm pretty sure they're the ones that published it. Like he, they, they didn't make it. He's they're just a publisher. Uh huh. Oh no, it's concerned date. No, I think they published it. Hold on, maybe for consoles or something. Mm-hmm. But Chucklefish is known. Research together. Star. Chucklefish is known for uh, Starbound. <laughs> Anybody who plays Starbound? Yes. Oh, I okay. I know of it. They, I know they published uh, Stardew Valley. Yeah. Okay. On the Switch, okay. Android, and iOS. Uh, other things they've done is they publish uh, Risk of Rain. And mm. the games that they developed is uh, War Groove, which is the. Um, yeah. Advanced Wars thing and Starbound which yeah. is also another popular indie game so yeah this one is specifically about Starbound a lot of reports are coming out of people who worked on Starbound of not being paid a single cent oh oh come on they use a lot of like young people trying to get into the industry of yep. course and just abuse their labor for you know Saying they'll promise pay, but they'll at least have their name on something. Ugh, it's disgusting. Exposure, because you can eat that shit. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's the thing. Screw them then. <laughs> uh, well, uh, gonna continue not playing their games, I guess. <laughs> I guess yeah, I guess just not supporting them, because it's not like they're giving that money where it's due. <laughs> So yes, uh, also they were really abusive and shit. Oh, I mean, obviously. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I mean. At the very least. It, that usually seems to go together, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the next one. Three game developers. Okay, one of them is the uh, video game composer. Uh, Jeremy Soule. He's known for the Elder Scroll series. And like, he's, he's big time. Oh. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. the one, he's, uh, it's the guy, he got Me too Yep. So, oh, no. yep, uh, Jeremy Soule, uh, composer of Skyrim, uh, Alec Holoka, co-creator of Aquaria and Night in the Woods, and one more person, I remember there was three. Oh, uh, somebody from, uh, Sp- Flash here uh, It wasn't as big as the other two because these two guys, number one, Jeremy Soule is like a you know major composer in the video game industry and Ella Koloka is actually really well known in the indie developer scene. Like, mm. um, outside, so we know him for certain games but, you know, developers know him for like, you know, more I suppose. But, but yeah, sexual assault and rape and being abusive during relationships and stuff like that. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the other one is Splash Damage programmer Luke Shelton. Also sexual assault. <sighs> yeah. And I was reading mostly the Alec Holoka and the uh, Jeremy Soule ones. Jeremy Soule especially came off as an incel kind of... Oh, mm-hmm. come on. I think like a day after the uh, allegations came out, or maybe 12 hours, he just deleted everything. Twitter, Facebook, everything. Probably by uh, probably from his uh, advice from his lawyer or something. Yeah, probably. I mean, yeah. that's, that's not necessarily it's, incriminating. It's, not, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, but then but. more people have come out about all these people as well, saying that yeah, they're kind of shitty people. And so, but it doesn't stop there. So. Oh great. Yeah. Uh, it continues mostly with Alec Holoka. Uh, so apparently he had a lot of issues. Not, not even close to defending him, but apparently he had a lot of like uh, mental health issues that he wasn't getting help mm-hmm. for. That's why it mm-hmm. could be one of the reasons why he was doing all these um, like abusive things when like he was in a relationship right. with people. That he was in relationships with people as he abused them, you know. So it's not a mm-hmm. okay. So yeah. um, so 
he finally got help i think in 2016 17 and people mm-hmm. actually some of them actually decided to forgive him and stuff mm-hmm. after the allegations came out the allegations by Zoe Quinn by the way the oh, right. person the person that Gamergate was uh oh yeah yeah I'm, revolved around yeah yep. um yeah Ella Holka committed suicide and a lot of people blame her yikes what an ugly situation yep it's just it's a lose lose for everybody yeah seriously it's yikes i don't really know what else to really say to that but yikes yeah it's just a very yeah everybody lost in that situation i mean i don't know if anyone was gonna win in that situation <laughs> either way yeah, but no. oof. uh she said that the post wasn't to call him out on it necessarily the post was mostly for her and to tell her story and to basically warn other people um because she said that she forgiven him and um yeah it's not her fault that he committed suicide no and it's a very almost misogynistic sexist i guess a woman comes up with a story the guy gets some kind of like backlash and it's her fault but it's like it's, it's always like she mm. she o- yes the women always owes the men you, you get what i mean right. like she can't tell yeah, her yeah, story yeah. and it's always and right. whenever something happens to the guy like she I, because uh, as the news came out ella Koloka was working on a game another game i think with the uh, night in the woods people as well like the same people collaborating and uh-huh. the the people that were collaborating with was just like, oh, yeah, we're going to stop working with them. So that was that as well before the whole, um, you know, the death. Yeah. So she doesn't owe him not to tell the story. Yeah, I mean, and that's and I think that what people are always going to ask, like, you know, why now? And unfortunately, it is because the Me Too movement is happening yeah. now. It's, before there was no safety to time, do that. But the well, best the, the best time, time to... is now because like you said the safety and it is a movement the safety of it now you know um it's it's certainly it it's certainly rough and i you know i it's i am sorry that he was struggling with that but yeah i mean she doesn't this was now the time that people are finally comfortable coming out with information like this and no i never blame so if someone has um you know committed suicide i never really blame anyone unless they were literally going there saying yeah there was like that, that case <laughs> with that uh like two teenagers in america or something yes that's, that's she was literally telling different. him to kill She's himself telling him to do it yeah, yeah. Th- that's different so i you know very very different in my opinion so but but i but you do raise a really good point because we see this unfortunately as a woman you see it all the time a woman is in pain and she's expected to just bear shut it. the fuck up, yeah. Just, just shut up and burden it and just let it within. The minute that her pain, she is releasing it and it causes pain to a man, now it's her fault. And so the fact that it was like, well, she was holding this pain this entire time, you know? So it's. It's, it's like that don't respect the dead thing, similar to that. Or it's like, mm-hmm. there's no excuse for you to bottle it up. Like, yeah. right? I don't know, it's not fair. It's not fair, you know. Like um, there was and this so, uh, billionaire that recently died, also American, and everybody was like, "Yeah, fuck him. He was an asshole. He was a literal piece of shit or something." I can't oh, remember who the, it was. Oh, the Coke brothers. Yes, Coke yes, yes, brothers. yes, yes. Oh yeah, There's a yeah, Coke yeah. guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there was a, like I really I don't understand this whole respect the dead thing. Like dying, don't gr- gr- you don't get respect for dying. I know. That makes literally no sense to me. Yeah, I mean, don't tell, I guess, to his family. That's probably not very polite. <laughs> yeah, like, just, but, but yeah, he's done I mean, shit when no... he was alive, which is way more yeah. important than his death, I would say. Yeah, just call I him know. out on it. Call call whatever, you know, like, just, you know. We know, I mean, it's this. now we can finally put the truth out because, you know, can't do he can't do anything about it now, so. <laughs> which is also, like, you know, some people time. felt feel probably safer or something, too. Yeah, yeah. it's true. You mm. know. But, yeah, it's all very true. It's very tragic, but it is. It's all, but yeah, you know, because I've been seeing so many posts, even by, yeah, I've been seeing so many comments and posts about how she caused her death. She did not cause. He was already struggling with, um, he was already struggling with like mental health issues. So this is not new yeah. for him, 
and no. it may be the thing that pushed him over the edge, but she doesn't owe him shit. No, she doesn't have that. She's not responsible for his mental health, and I think that's what a lot of people, and unfortunately that is a very real misogynistic thing. Um, I mean, gosh, think about, dude, when you see anything in the news that results where it's like a woman and a man in a relationship that end up separating. I mean, I, nobody cares about Ariana Grande on this show probably, but I just, I don't really either, but I just remember when one of her exes had oh, the comedian um, passed guy, right. away. Yeah, and everyone was like, uh, he, why didn't you do anything I don't think to he killed, help him? I don't think he died. I think he just... Um... No, he, o- he OD'd, I think. What? Oh, I didn't know it got that far. Seriously? He, he, I'm not sure if he OD'd. He was a... No, because he, he was saying, he like, had, uh, why don't you want to see me? Up? If you don't see me, I'll kill myself or something. That's, he was, like, threatening it. That might oh, have been. No. Yeah. I didn't know about that part. I know he had, He was struggling with something. I thought it was a substance abuse. Dude, I don't really, really know. But there were a lot of people that were looking at her going, why didn't you help him? You know, how could you do this? And she's like... <laughs> <laughs> we, first of all, what we broke it off, and also second off, not my responsibility. You know? uh, you're talking about Pete Davidson, right? The SNL comedian. Yes, yeah, I yeah, am. he's yeah. he's alive. Yeah. He's alive. Oh, but he was no, who was he, he was threatening suicide though. Uh, Pete Davidson okay, and Ariana Grande know. was engaged, and they had a lot of issues. Oh, they were engaged. I, somebody she knew did die. Yeah, they were engaged. I, somebody she knew did die though. I thought. Ah, whatever. Hmm. Whatever it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Anyway, point is, but yes, we are often. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's very frustrating. You see this all the time. Oh, Mac it's Miller VR. died. Mac Miller. I'm sorry. It was Mac Miller. Excuse me, dude. I can't keep him. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Another She's guy. A g- guy. But yes. Who, who, who sings? Sorry, or Pete Davidson. She was engaged too. They're no longer engaged. Mac Miller had passed away. I believe he had a substance use problem. Mm. Um, all this reminds me the a new announced SNL cast member. Uh, they found like. Footage of him doing stand up and just being super homophobic and racist on a podcast. And his defense is, dude, it was 2018. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I guess <laughs> that was Last yesterday, year. me. <laughs> yeah, ancient you know, history. I, oh I think I know who you're like, talking I'm about. A... I saw the tweet yesterday uh, and he was saying, if you go through 10 years history of my comedy, you will hear a lot of things or something. It was what he said. If I just Google new SNL, it's the top story. Oh, okay. Shane Gillis's jokes went too far. Did that end his SNL career? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. So his defense was, it was, it was 2018. 2018. <laughs> Basically. Like, because I remember when the whole James Gunn thing happened, and we talked about uh, it, because it had been over yeah. 10, it was like over 10 or 15 years ago, and the whole thing, reason it came out was really sketchy and all that stuff. Um, and I remember we were like, okay, he shouldn't have said that, but like, uh, that was, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, it's up, you know, there blah, is blah, a, There is, it does, I, I will, age is a factor. I do believe that. And actually, I, that's one of the reasons I'm really scared for our younger generation. Because, <laughs> you know, we all thought stupid things when we were teenagers, right? We all had stupid thoughts. And unfortunately, teenagers now can put it on the internet for everybody to <laughs> see. And it's there forever. And yeah. that's really scary to me because it's... people are harshly judged on that kind of stuff. Um, so, like, yep. I can give, yeah, age is a factor. You know, I can give, you know, I can allow somebody room to grow. But saying it was 2018, come on! <laughs> it was last uh, year! It's actually funny. I remember there's a pretty funny SNL sketch from several years ago where the joke is it's a Lifetime Achievement Award for this advertising executive. It's like, let's play some of your um, your best public service announce- announcements, you know, some of your finest work. And mm-hmm. it's like, like, hey, Billy, do you want some drugs? It's like, I don't do drugs. Drugs are gay. It's just like, you know, using like, it's like, it doesn't hold up that well. It was 1990 when these ads aired. It's like, let's, let's not go over these again. <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> like, no, like smoking's That's retarded. You know, just like that kind of stuff. It's just like. <laughs> oh, no. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's true, I like though. the idea. Yeah. I mean, and yes, I the agree with the whole it wasn't okay. Yeah. And also, I mean, and I do agree with the idea. Like, it wasn't okay back then. I agree with that. But at the same time, like. I can allow that. But 2018? No. There's no excuse. Yeah, nope. Big no. nope. Big, big absolute no, To be fair, nope. I didn't go back and actually watch the bits that are supposed to be so horrible. Um, yeah, I'm just trusting knows? that they're as horrible as people claim they are, which is probably true. I don't know. It, there's probably a... Yeah, yeah, there's always a bit of a side to it. <laughs> I'm sure it is horrible. Is it BuzzFeed freaking out horrible? I don't know. <laughs> 
But yeah. So yeah. Do you have any more bad news for us, Char? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a good news to wrap us up today? Uh, I don't have no more good news. Oh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, hmm. Sorry for that weird noise. I don't know what came out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird good news discord is no longer continuing with the nitro game store <laughs> oh my oh, gosh I forgot, I forgot they, they had a store yeah <laughs> they had a store <laughs> a waste of their time yeah. <laughs> um astral chain yeah, has been getting good reviews is the i've been hearing good things about yeah. it but i haven't played it yet uh i was t- thinking of really getting into that mm. So I don't remember what my that Switch is, is getting a lot of playtime. My PS4 has not been turned on for the past two months at least. <laughs> I still have games to play on that though. Um, there's so many exclusives on the Switch. Holy shit! I know. I mean, good because I have a Switch. Good. There's a so, game. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a game I'm... <laughs> because I have the Switch. Yeah. There's a game I definitely want to get that it was made by the creators of Zero Escape and Dog and Rampa. Um, they mm. made a new game for the Switch. Wait, it's what? coming out, I think, in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, mm. Called AI Sony. Oh, Files, that's a I think. $60 game, that shit. Yeah, I know. It's a visual um, novel. I've heard it's pretty good. It's a visual novel oh, okay. esque. It's, it's a similar kind of visual novel puzzles mm. and stuff like oh, that. Okay. And branching pathways. Oh, I didn't know it was do, uh, Zero less, Escape and Dungan. Yes, it was yeah. by those guys. They they've been they made a team some time ago, and this is their first game out. Um, I've heard good things about it by people who like those series, so I'm probably gonna get it. <laughs> um, I don't know if it'll be as anything like. Uh, it's also on PC like and PS4. So. Yes, they usually do multiple, mm. but I know it's on. I know it's kind of made for the Switch, so I'll need to get it and play it sometime soon. <laughs> At first, when I saw it, I didn't think it was them because I saw the, the the character models and the graphics. I'm like, is this a JRPG or something? It looks really like, yeah. you know, that kind of, yeah. you know, that recent like rush of JRPGs mm-hmm. that look. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nope, it's by them. Um, they made a new um, company together. I think they used to work together a long time ago, um, and now they're they're coming back together again. So uh, for me, um, it just says can... here on Steam at least, it's just a uh, Spike Chunsoft. That is, that's, yeah. Um, that's probably their publisher. Uh, no, it's, um, uh, the... it's uh, listed as developer and publisher. Really? Yeah. So they have Danganronpa, Steins Gate, Zero Escape, Fire Pro Wrestling. Mm. And, you yeah. know, interesting. Sp- anyway, I, went, I couldn't tell you. But yeah, so probably going to be playing that at some point. Mm. Damn. Ooh. I know you love vision novels and stuff, but paying $60 for a vision novel just... It depends on the visual novel. That's true. And, like, if, if I it's mean, got, they, if it's they have got, a track record, so I don't think it's a bad idea. They have a good track record, so I'm not too worried. Um, as long as it's like full of actual good story and um, decent gameplay, I don't mind. And like part of it, too, for me is just that I don't mind the their stories and stuff like that. I do agree on principle. However, visual novels should not be $60. Um, and there's plenty of visual novels that I enjoy that I think have been $60, and I would say to your face, don't pay that much. <laughs> mm. um, I think because vision not, novels are I just love, so niche that people will They're very pay niche. For it um, I mean, I love Phoenix Wright, but I don't even think I could, unless they totally changed how it worked, I don't think I would feel comfortable. No, it was never $60. $60. It was. It never has been. Uh, thirty forty dollars. Like for, yeah, thirty to forty, and that's fine. Like I, that's a game that I love, and I don't feel comfortable paying sixty bucks mm. for. Um, the only reason I'm okay with it with these guys is because, um, uh, usually because there's multiple path lines that all diverge into a bigger story, so mm, there's yeah. a lot of gameplay involved. Um, a lot more than some of your traditional visual novels. So that's why I'm usually okay with it. But. It is, I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> it's, uh, normally I would say don't do it. <laughs> Gears of War 5 is out. It's also on Steam. And it's getting good reviews. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about getting it on Steam. Um, there's a game that's coming out soon called Pine. It's apparently like a, it's like a, an adventure, like action adventure game. It has a similar look to like Breath of the Wild. And um, mm. The, the apparently the uh, the gimmick for this game is the the, the systems and stuff like you, the, the things you do in the world will like you know it's like random and things will uh, react to the things you do and stuff I don't mm. seems interesting might take a look at mm-hmm. it when it's out uh, I'm trying to find something good to end with 
Uh, I saw. I want to plug uh, Terra Guard, which is a like a no budget indie game that a person I know in real life made, coming out October fourth. It's an RPG Maker game, um, which doesn't you know, denote very, its quality. Doesn't. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's visually, it's not any. That's not the most visually impressive thing ever. But I played his first game, um, and it was very fun. What's the and, first uh, game again? Kind of, kind of meta. Um, shoot, I did a whole let's play of it. It was. It began with an S. And it was also, uh, it was also, um, RPG makery. I'm gonna look it up. It's like San. Oh, this is embarrassing. Is this what we're doing now? Plugging our friend stuff? Collusion! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I saw a trailer for a game called Trash Sailors, funny. and it looks fucking amazing. That sounds awesome. All right. So it's like, uh, don't starve overcook kind of thing so you're trash sailors you're sailing with a thing that you built on trash and you gotta work together to fight the enemies and continue building your thing and repair your thing and okay it's called sojourner that's the previous game ah, okay i remember you mentioning it uh trash sailors sounds cool that's pc what? and switch or just pc uh i'm not sure what I'm sorry, I just saw the thing on uh, YouTube. But it looks really cool. Uh, it's on Steam. Co-op Raft Survival. It has a very nice um, like paper, don't starve look. Very, very beautiful. It looks really nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, uh, no good news, but I guess good stuff is coming out. That's good. That's good. Unless they're like homophobic or something. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Dear we'll Trash Sailors that, devs, don't be homophobic or something. <laughs> please, please just don't like, enough of that so yeah uh do the thing okay uh, i'm sarah scopic s-a-r-a-h-s-c-o-p-i-c i am currently in the process of reconstructing how i'm doing youtube and twitch so keep uh keep tuned uh tuned for that i can't say that correctly uh but follow me on twitter and say hi i'll say hi back and i'm faux hamner uh, uh we'll see if i can actually you know, make the right choices and record and not just get lost in, in WoW Classic or Borderlands 3 or whatever. So hopefully just, there'll just, be episodes next just, week. Just, no promises. Just stream WoW Classic. Fuck it. <laughs> and I'm Pupu no Pew Pew and it'll be... You know where to find me. This has been the... Oh, Jesus. This has been episode 161 of the Play on Ultra podcast. Thank you very much for watching and listening. We will see you next time. Hopefully not three weeks time. But yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.